in this session is represent the inverse of one-to-one -one function through its graph and table of values. Let us define first what a one-to-one -one function is. A one-to-one -one function is a function in which for every value of x, there corresponds a unique value of y. So meaning to say no x coordinate and no y coordinate are repeated. Okay. Here are some features of a one-to-one -one function. Number one, a function is said to be one-to-one -one if and only if no horizontal line intersects its graph in more than one point. What does that mean? It means to say that if you will graph x cubed minus 2, of course, this one is a function. This one is its graph. If you will draw a horizontal line anywhere on the graph, this horizontal line intersects the graph at only one point. So, in number one, this one, this is obviously a one-to-one -one function because, of course, this horizontal line intersects this graph at only one point. You can draw this horizontal line anywhere you want. What about here in number two? If I will draw it here, it intersects the graph at two points here and this one. So definitely this one is not a one-to-one -one function. So if I will draw it here, still two points. It intersects the graph at two points. And here in number three, if I will draw a horizontal line here, so it intersects the graph at only one point. So this one is one to one. Anywhere I can draw horizontal steel, this horizontal line intersects the graph at only one point. One point, one point, one point. So number one and number three are one to one function. And number two is not a one to one function. Number two. A function is one-to-one -one if no two ordered pairs have the same second coordinates. Take note, have the same second coordinates. So we have here the set 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Number one is one-to-one. -one. Why? Because no second coordinate. These are the second coordinates, 4, 6, and 8. No second coordinates are repeated. Number two, we have negative two, negative one, two, negative two, four, negative two. So in here, we have negative two is repeated. So that means to say this is not a one-to-one -one function. What about here in number three? In number three, we have negative one, five, negative five, nine, negative seven, twelve, no x is repeated and no y is also repeated. So therefore, this one is one-to-one -one function. Number three, the graphs of inverse function are reflections of each other through line y is equal to x. So we have here f of x is equal to 4x minus 5 its graph is the blue one. This is the blue one. And g of x is equal to x plus 5 over 4. Its graph is the green one. So the inverse of the blue is, of course, the green one. And they are reflections through line y is equal to x. Line y is equal to x is the red one. So therefore, this one is a one-to-one -one function. Number two, f of x is equal to 2 over x minus 3 and g of x is 3x plus 2 over x. Again, 2 over x minus 3, the graph of this is the red one. They are in pair. And then 3x plus 2 over x are the green one. Again, they are in pair. 
So this y is y is equal to x. They are also reflections. Therefore, it is also one-to-one -one function. Let us now verify whether they are really inverses by using, of course, its table of values. So we have f of x is equal to 4x minus 5. I assign values for x since x is the independent variable. If x is 0, let us replace 0 here in x. That will be 4 times 0 is 0 minus 5 is negative 5. Next, 1. 4 times 1 is 4, minus 5 is negative 1. Next, 2, 4 times 2 is 8, minus 5 is 3. And the last one, negative 1, 4 times negative 1 is negative 4, minus 5, that is negative 9. What about this one? Let us use this one also. Let us use negative 5, negative 1, 3, and negative 9. If x is negative 5, let us replace here negative 5. That will be 0 over 4. That is 0. Next, negative 1. Negative 1 plus 5 over 4. That will be 4 over 4. That is 1. Let us replace x by 3. That is 3 plus 5 over 4. This is 8 over 4. That is 2. And the last one, we have negative 9 plus 5 over 4. This is negative 4 over 4, which is negative 1. So what did you notice here? You will notice that the set of x's here, or the domain, is the range of its inverse. The range of its inverse and vice versa. That's why they are reflections. Take note of that. So the original function is f of x. Its inverse is g of x. You will notice that the domain of the f of x, the function f of x, is the range of its inverse g of x. And the range of f of x is the domain of its inverse g of x. Take note of that.